Hi, I'm Sherry DePaulo from SherryDePauloArt.com and I am a member of Jean Petit's creative design team and I'm so thankful to have been chosen. It's very exciting and I look forward to making many projects for you throughout the next year. But this time, this is my very first one and what I chose to do was use Sean's um, Windows 2 stencil, this one right here. And what we're making today is a six by six canvas of the window pane and it has a beautiful floral um, flower box with all the pretty flowers just kind of cascading down and it sort of has like a vintage feel so I hope you enjoy the project I hope you learned something and if you have any questions or any comments please leave them in the comment section make sure you subscribe too because all the other girls in the creative team are amazing artists and you're going to learn a lot this year thanks I hope you enjoy the video So to get things started, you can see that I'm using Mod Podge, that's my preferred adhesive medium. And I'm using a piece of paper that I created with my jelly plate. And all I'm doing is adhering it to a 6x6 six six canvas, because I thought that'd be a nice size to do this project on. I'm ripping the sides and adding more to finish it off. And then I like to add texture by using my stays on ink. I usually use black and a texture stamp and just randomly stamp it around the canvas. Then after I'm finished stamping, I take the black ink pad and rub it around to pick up all the texture from the paper beneath. I'm using Golden Fluids Teal and Payne's Gray paint and I'm applying it with a makeup sponge to Jean Petit's Stencil Windows 2. I'm careful to hold the stencil down so that the paint doesn't go underneath the stencil and that way I get a good crisp look. But after I'm finished I noticed that I needed to add a little bit more so I just used a paintbrush and sort of filled in the empty spots. I then took Golden's Golden Fluids Titanium White and then I used it to make the lines of the windows more prominent because I felt like it shouldn't all be blue like the teal color. So I used the white to kind of highlight that and then I realized that I did get underneath the stencil so I just took a baby wipe and cleaned it up a little bit. I got my Golden Fluid Paints Green Gold Chromium Oxide Green my Liquitex Basics Brilliant Yellow Green acrylic paint. I then started to apply the leaves of the flower arrangement that's going to be in the window box. And I started with the dark chromium oxide green paint and just kind of made some mark making of where um, I assumed that the, the leaves would be because what I did was a window scene with flowers, like a flower box on the outside. So you can see where I'm using all the different paints and I'm just kind of mixing them. I started with the darker green, the chromium oxide green, then I added green gold, and then the basics Liquitex yellow green, and just kind of intermixed them in a random pattern um, to add some depth and you know kind of give it some different coloring. I then got my Liquitex basics, my cadmium red deep hue, primary red, and quinacridone magenta. And I also got my golden fluorescent pink, which is one of my all-time favorite colors. And I, again, did the same thing as I did with the leaves by tar starting with the deep red hue, or the red deep hue, and just kind of randomly made some mark making with my brushes, and then added primary red and then the magenta, and randomly um, added them on top of the leaves in a, in a pattern. And again, they're just, they're just marks, so it's not difficult. They're not individual flowers. They're made to look like flowers. Here I got my Liquitex Basics Light Portrait Pink Paint Acrylics, and I used it to add a lighter shade to the flowers in the flower box. While I was adding the portrait pink, I was also dipping into the fluorescent pink just to add a little touch of brightness to it. 
And as I've been saying all along, I'm just randomly dotting these little marks on to represent the flowers in the flower box. It's really quite easy and that's why I picked this project because I wanted to show you that it's really not individual flowers that you're painting. It's basically mark making with the illusion and the abstract version of a flower box. Here I'm going back with my green and I'm adding additional leaves because I felt like it needed to kind of spread out a little bit further. And then you can see that I actually didn't like that so I just used a baby wipe to wipe it up. And it can't, the paint comes off so nicely because I had Mod Podge as one of the layers. When I adhered the paper to the canvas I used Mod Podge and that makes it really nice for cleaning up mistakes before they dry. I then got my all time favorite Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. The first one was ivory color. The other three are a little bit fatter. They're the Pitt Artist Pen Big Brushes, and the colors are Nougat, Warm Gray 5, and Cold Gray 3. And the way I used all three of these colors was to do some shading and to add some depth into the windows, into the window, into the different individual panes of the window because it was kind of flat. So as I added the color, I added and use my finger to kind of smudge it around a little bit and also if I didn't like something or I wanted to lighten an area I just used a baby wipe to wipe it away because prior to it drying it is removable and then once it dries it becomes permanent so you have that little bit of leeway time to go ahead and make these changes. I then got my sky blue and my indenthrine blue, can't really say that word, but um, I use those to add some color and bring some of the blue into the pane, the window pane area. And as you can see, again, I'm using my finger to sort of smudge it around and um, kind of just pull that color in, in from the wood frame. Now that I had all my shading in, I decided to get my stencil out again and just sort of redefine the lines of the window panes. I moved on then to start adding a little bit more green into the floral area so that it could be defined with the leaves of the flowers. And I'm adding some at the bottom because I kind of wanted them to cascade down so you can see where I'm adding some of that. And I'm also adding some more of the flowers as well. And then I picked up my teal and my Payne's Gray again and used it to kind of redefine the, the wooden frame of the window and sort of add a little bit of um, depth again to that as well. I decided to dip my brush into the Golden Fluid Acrylics Titan Buff Paint to kind of add a little bit of a neutral color and because my brush had a little bit of red on it from prior use, it kind of mixed together to this real, real pretty pale pink and I used it to add it to the ends of the canvas and throughout the flower box to kind of bring all that color together. I pulled out my big brush chromium green opaque um, artist pen and added a little bit of that and used my finger to kind of blend it and sort of bring all that together and then I went back to my ink and indenthrine blue <laughs> again I still can't say that word and I added a little bit more and kind of blended it in just to sort of frame out where the wind paint panes were.
I pulled out another big brush pen, Deep Scarlet Red, to add that color into the floral box. And then I also pulled it into the window frames to kind of bring it all together. And then also I added it over top of the Titan Buff paint that I had put down and blended it with my finger and it created a really, really pretty pink. I pulled out my favorite pen, the Pilot G2 Ballpoint Pen in Black Ink. I use it a lot for doodling and for kind of outlining um, different pieces of work that I do. And here you can see where I'm just adding the outline to the frame and to the window panes. Take note of the piece of paper to the right of the artwork. When you use a pen like the G2 Pilot over top of paint, it sometimes gets clogged. So by just doodling on a piece of plain white paper, it cleans it off and it allows it to work better. I was looking at my painting and I felt like the flowers were too close together so I needed to try to fix it. So I decided to keep this in here so that you can see how easy it is to fix a mixed media project. Basically all I did was get the same paper that I used when I first started the project and just ripped up a few little pieces and Mod Podge them over top of the painting of the flowers that I had to just kind of cover it up and start all over again. And then I'm using the Titan Buff and the Titanium White and I'm just kind of covering over it and drying it with my dryer so that I can go back in and begin to create the leaves and the flowers again. And here you see I'm putting in my leaves. I'm starting with the darker green, adding green gold and the yellow green um, brilliant color and then some whites and then I'm adding the reds and the magentas to add more flowers again and just to sort of clean it up and make the shape of the flowers in the flower box look a little bit more realistic. And by the time I'm done, you are not going to be even be able to notice that those few little pieces of paper were there. So that's the beauty of being able to clean up any kind of mistake that you make in mixed media. Everything is fixable and that's one of the things that I love about it. If you haven't noticed um, in the video, I use my fingers a lot to move the paint and move the ink around. I love the effect that it gives with the, what I call smooshing and smudging of the paint and the ink. And um, so I use my hands and my fingers a lot in my paintings. Um, it really gives it a nice look and, and I really, really enjoy that. My all-time favorite color is Golden Fluids Teal paint, acrylic paints, and I try to add it into almost every piece of art that I do. I feel like it's like my signature color. So I got myself a little liner brush and just dipped it lightly into the teal and just sort of scattered little dots of teal throughout the floral arrangement and then a little bit in the frame. I pulled out my stash from my scrapbooking days of rub-ons and I picked the butterflies and the birds to add as embellishments to my piece. I cut them out and then I used my tweezers to kind of hold them up where I wanted them. And then I used a blunt object to just rub them on and you simply put, the, put it where you want it and you just rub it. Unfortunately, rub-ons are very, very hard to come by these days but I have a pretty large stash of them from my scrapbooking days, so I still continue to use them. And you can see where I'm just kind of adding that little special touch. I 
I decided on the primary red Liquitec Basics color to use for my border to go around the edges of my canvas. And here you can see that I'm putting on my first layer and it usually takes uh, two or three layers before it looks good. I'm using my fingers because there are some of the paint that kind of gathered on top of the canvas and so I just use my fingers to spread it out. Then I add my second coat to make it be a full coverage and I chose that color because I felt like it really pulled out the, the, one of the main colors in the, in the piece and I think it looks really nice. That concludes my video for this creative design team. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and follow me on social media and on my YouTube channel as well. And I look forward to seeing you for future projects. Take care and I will see you soon.